So this model here is actually showing you a couple of different things. You have some of the uh, digestive system structures, the oral cavity, and then you also have some of the respiratory system structures. So we're going to start with the digestive system. So this is showing you here the tongue, and you have some taste buds here located on the tongue. Uh, below the tongue, uh, you're going to find what's called the sublingual salivary gland. So lingual referring to tongue. Uh, you're also going to see here the submandibular salivary gland. So sub means below. Uh, so again, the sublingual is under the tongue. Submandibular is below the mandible. You've got to imagine that this bone is sticking out further, so it's below the mandible. There is a third salivary gland that you can't see on this model, but you can see on the torso model. So we'll go up to that now. So it's this uh, salivary gland right here. It's called the parotid gland, and it sits just over top of the masseter muscle when it connects the jaw. On the torso, you can actually also see the submandibular gland that's sticking out under here. If we go back to our other model, if we follow the flow of the food here, um, first we should talk about how uh, the mouth or the oral cavity is where the chemical and mechanical digestion begins. So mechanical digestion is basically talking about how we process the food uh, with our teeth. So it's breaking it down into smaller and smaller pieces so that it's easier for the enzymes to attack it. The chemical digestion is going to begin with the secretions from the salivary glands. It secretes what's called salivary amylase to help start the, the process of breaking down carbohydrates in the mouth. Now if we follow our food back uh, posterior to the tongue here, we can see that we have the epiglottis structure leading down through the glottis, right? But we don't want the food to go into the glottis because that would lead down into the trachea. That would be our food down the wrong tube. All right, so what happens is our food, which we now call a food bolus, is going to move over top of this epiglottis and push it down over top of the glottis so that the food will be forced posteriorly to the esophagus, which sits right back here. Now recall that we had our tracheal cartilages or our C-rings that don't completely close in the back. And that is exactly why they don't close in the back, is because the esophagus is back here. So the esophagus is usually flattened and very, very small. But when the food bolus comes down, it has to expand. So it allows us to put a little pressure on this uh, ligament here, on this connect connective tissue, and it allows for expansion uh, so that our food can move down the tube. Other structures that you would see from the respiratory aspect here would include the structures of the larynx. So we already talked about the epiglottis, right, covering the glottis, which is the hole. Uh, the other structures of the larynx you can see are the hyoid bone. Right? You also have the thyroid cartilage with the laryngeal prominence or the Adam's apple. And below this musculature, I actually turn this this way, you can see the cricoid cartilage, so this wider band here. And just underneath that, you have that thyroid gland. So that sort of U-shaped thyroid gland would actually extend over here. It's just not shown, so you can see the cartilage. Uh, the other structure that you can see on here that's important to take a look at is the uh, vocal cords or vocal folds. So if we pull this apart, you can see inside this little white line right here that is showing you the vocal fold or the vocal cord. So the air would travel through the glottis over top of that vocal cord down into the trachea so that we can make noise and I can tell you what I'm telling you right now.